Hello everyone. So in this blog we will talk about a uh, deep dive in HTML in AM part 2. So we will go in more deep insightly and we will talk about some of the very very important syntax which we always do mistakes while writing about them. So we will start with component placeholder. So while creating a component it's good to have a placeholder for every component in the edit mode. So let's try this syntax. So this is my text field component. I have already created this and now I write here form x. So this is uh, a placeholder for this text field component. So when you uh, when you drag and drop this component, you will be able to see a placeholder in the edit mode. And when you go in the published mode, there is no placeholder. So uh, when sometimes we have condition like until file reference don't exist or don't create any long. So it is always good to have like if uh, there is nothing to render in HTML, at least we can render a placeholder so that we can get the edit bar. Uh, next is data slide attribute. This attribute is very, very important in terms of while creating form widgets because uh, in the form widgets, we used attributes like required, sometimes read only, sometimes disabled. So how to use data slide attribute? So while creating a text field, we need we need this thing when the text field uh, when we checkbox the required. So when we did this, I want this DOM to be rendered, and when there is no required, I don't want this attribute to be there. So I put the so here I put data slide attribute dot required is equal to required is that attribute which we need to render. Uh, this is the condition on the basis of which this attribute will render. So if properties dot required will be true, only then this attribute will be rendered. Else the complete section will be omitted. Omitted means removed. So if I click on required, anything, just add anything. So let's check here. So you can see there is a required. Uh, okay, there is a required attribute exists here. If I remove required from here, there is not a required attribute here. So this uh, this data slide attribute is very important uh, in terms of when we want to show attribute on the basis of some condition. If you want this attribute to be read only, I mean any attribute, it's just an example. So if you want to render read only on the basis of required, I have not changed my condition. I just want to show you like this gets rendered on the basis of this condition. Next is avoid using HTML uh, comments. You may have seen like in a lot of places we used to provide HTML comments to tell new developers like, okay, we have done this here and what is the use case of this. But there is a problem with HTML comment. If we put HTML comment, let's check this out what happens. So HTML comments become the uh, part of final markup. And we always want to make our markup very, very neat and clean. So we recommend to use HTML comments. So we have put so many comments here, removed all the comments and see. So see, the markup is very, very clean. One more important I would like to mention here, the one mistake which I always used to do, I always used to do it like this and then it doesn't happen. So there is no space the comment so always remember that there is no space here so please keep this thing in mind it's a usual mistake i have seen people doing okay next is context sensitive i'm skipping it for a moment uh, let's complete the small one first always use existing html elements for block statement so what is the block statement so block statement is this on the basis of condition when i render one section then this is called a block statement so what they are saying the uh, as per slightly best practice always use existing html elements so here we have created one block just for this condition so they are saying it's not a good practice remove it from here put it here and just remove this block. So always use existing blocks for uh, any, uh, always use existing uh, existing elements uh, 
uh, for block statement. So until this condition won't be true, they are not going to render this particular. Code. So let's see. See here, but in the final markup, nothing, nothing related to this is getting rendered. So this is always you uh, a best practice, and obviously the lines of code gets reduced. So always use the existing markup. Third is ternary operator. Ternary operator is very very useful in terms of HTML, and this is the major problem with the syntax of ternary operator. Everybody does mistakes with ternary operator, so it's very very important to talk about. It. So let's remove everything here, and okay. Let's put one condition like okay in, in ternary I want to put one condition. This is my comment. If page title exists, render uh, render page title else page name. Correct. So strict slash correct. Now if current page dot name sorry current page dot page title but let me check if i'm able to render this right now i don't think there is any page title oh i think i have already put some page title here okay let's add let's check page title shivani so what is my condition if there is a page title render page title so now space question mark space if this is there render the same thing else render current page dot so refresh see if I remove this what should render page name page name is toolbar see so this is how ternary condition work everybody does mistake here so there is a space here space here there is a space before here there is a space before here so always consider these spaces while working with ternary condition uh, the next one is condition based on page template. Several times we need to put a condition like current page to template path is equal to something then please do something. So let's try this out also. Maybe again data fly. First I need to check what is the template of my page. Uh, so this is my current page dot template dot path. So this is my this is my template. So sometimes we need to make condition like this. I will not uh, write code for this because my concern is not this condition. My concern is that this condition will not work in the publish environment. Why? Because here we try to access the template path in the publish environment and because in the publish environment uh, all, only anonymous user is there. So anonymous user don't have access to this and that's why uh, there is always a null point of exception. So to avoid this situation, you can use in the publish environment. Obviously, because you are going to write the same on author and publish. So in place of this, always use page properties to template. It's also going to give the same results. Check this out also. Mm, I think I did some syntax error. Oh no, uh, it's not this page properties dot. Sorry, cp colon template. We have to render like this. Sorry. Yes. So you have. If you want to, you can't use. The, this property in publish environment so always use page properties dot cq colon template uh, but 
still there are some condition like people say no i really want to use this so give me a solution for this so that i can use the same thing in publish environment so yes obviously there's a solution for this so if you go to the felix console configuration manager i'm going to update this so if there is a configuration available there see here so see so i already give allow so the format is allow privilege means jcr read which privilege i need to give jcr read to which anonymous user and i want to give the permission to this apps no uh, let's make it to your matrix slash template i mean uh, my, my template path is this so i need to give something like this so let's give this so this is how you add this here and now you go to the user admin you are gonna so if you go anonymous user you check permission uh, apps geometrics templates so because of this configuration this permission gets added here you can directly go here and put this configuration in author and publish both but uh, i think this is quite manual so always i prefer like do using osgi configuration so if you want to make this function also work in publish environment you make this configuration allow this read property for anonymous user and then the same thing will work on publish also so this is how condition based on based on page template will work in publish environment now last thing is context sensitive so there are so many places where we use inline css and inline js so uh, let's talk about that also so let me put this here so i have already put some conditions here so see uh in my component if i want to render a image on the background so how can i do obviously i need to write inline css because without inline css we cannot set image images background so first let me delete this component and add hero banner component here hmm hero banner component okay now you see i upload this image just add anything here and oops i added it in textual sorry i need to add it here so if i check here see my image is rendering here because i am using this as inline css and i cannot achieve without inline css there are so many scripts also where we used to use inline css like we there are some values which we need to get in uh, get in our javascript so how to how using inline js we do it so this and how these values can be directly accessible so let's put so these values can be directly accessible using window dot uh, teaser config c dot skin you can directly access these variables but the problem come when there are so many same components over a page now how do you know like window dot teaser config dot skin is pointing to which particular object so to avoid these kind of problem and to because inline css and inline js is completely not recommended so we will try to avoid these things as much as possible so inline js uh, can be completely avoid using data attributes so this is always recommended recommended to use data attribute so if you want to fetch these values in our javascript always use data path attribute and you can fetch these values using this uh how to avoid inline css so inline css cannot be completely avoided because you have already seen these kind of situation like background image so there is no way that we can avoid it from here and directly can use it in css 
so we cannot completely avoid inline css but we can do something like when there are so many options like you have seen height and width i have given hard coded maybe i will give a text field here to fill author what is the width if i give an open text then i cannot do anything again i need i need to handle it using inline css but if i have a list of drop down like 100 200 300 400 i have four values so through these options i can use classes and then i can write css on that but again it is completely dependent on case to case so inline cjs can be completely avoided using data attributes but uh, inline CSS cannot be 100% avoid ever. So this is how our deep dive in HTML gets complete. I hope this will help you a lot. Thank you.